Next into the den is Claire Locke from Nottinghamshire. She's looking for £150,000. She came from but nothing. But remember Dragon's Den rules. <laughs> she has to go release that or go away with nothing. And it is the dragon's own money she's after, so she must get the pitch perfect. My name's Claire Locke. My company's called Smarty Pants. I'm looking for £150,000 investment in the business and I'm offering 25% equity. Uh, I don't know if you actually are aware of the personalised personalised industry within the UK. People adore to be branded, as we all know. But also, people adore to have their names on things. Nobody's actually come up with the concept of doing pants with your names on. The first range that I've designed is for children, aged 3 to 11. On the front, as you can see, you've got A for Alexandra, and then on the back, you've got Alexandra. They retail at 3 99 I think it's a fantastic product to go in things like Clinton's, or major retailers, or gift shops. I forgot where I am. <laughs> so basically, um, the product... Oh, it's all going wrong. I've been practising it for ages. <laughs> so basically, what do you think of the idea? Are you interested? Can you give me some advice and help? Hitching to the Dragons is a nerve-wracking experience and Claire has made a faltering start. She's asking for £150,000 in return for a 25% share of her company. But can she convince the Dragons to invest? Claire, Claire, what we're gonna, just tell me a little bit about yourself. What, how have you got to selling pants? Uh, well, I've, used, I've had a lot of, uh, I've got a lot of retail experience. Uh, I've had my own retail shops doing handbags and accessories. And basically, I finished doing my retail establishments because uh, I do have a son and I really wanted to dedicate more time to him. How much it's, money did you lose? How much money did I lose? Nothing. I didn't lose any money. I, I closed the business down because of uh, my son. So how are you making ends meet at the moment? I'm in between positions. I'm being supported in some respects by the government <laughs> at the moment. Uh, I'm in the process at the moment of finding employment so that I can also work on this in the part time. Because I've put finances into it. How, how much have you put into, into about it? About 15,000. 15,000. And I will be the first one to put my hands up and say, maybe I didn't need to put as much in, maybe I made a few mistakes, and I did. 15,000 doesn't sound a lot, actually. Okay, if this gets off the ground, how are you going to manufacture these pants? I've already got manufacturers set up in India. OK, what's going to cost you to manufacture them? Per pair, it uh, landed in, in my warehouse in 60 pence. So how many like are you that. manufacturing? 180,000. So you've ordered 180,000. How are you going to pay for them? It's a small technicality, as I say to my father. <laughs> Sorry? I've not worked that bit out. That's why I'm here. And that's why I've been trying to get so investment from So you've ordered 180,000, but you don't have the money to pay for it? No. Claire's ordered over £100,000 worth of underwear, but she's got no means of paying for it. This isn't the only issue for Theo Pafitis. Claire, have you got a warehouse? Did you mention a warehouse? I haven't got a warehouse at the moment, but, you'll but need it's one no one difficult. You'd need one if you get 180,000 pairs of knickers turning out, wouldn't you? Well, it's only a 20-foot container. It sounds a lot more space than what you... a big back garden? Yeah. What quality control have you actually put in place? If I go ahead by using the manufacturers in India, they already supply for the mother care products to this other company in the UK. Because they're doing something totally different for you, aren't they? So they well, yeah, but when you add the products mistake. over and you sign them off, you, there's a contract, there's a, an area Trust that... me, I signed off many products, and when I get them landed, I find that one leg is bigger than the other, and I have to burn them. So quality control is absolutely key. Claire, occurs to me, smart thing you might be spending your time on is getting out there and trying to get somebody to buy some of these, right? Very true. Good. So, what have you been doing to do that? I... It takes um, finances to even do things like that. Does it? Yeah. So you're telling me that you are so flat broke at this point, you don't have enough money to pick up the phone and call and get appointments and get to people and make... I mean, are you at a dead standstill? Is that the challenge? To a certain degree, yes. Okay. 
and you're at a standstill because you believe you need to have the stock in landed here before you can sell? Because I feel that it would be take pressure off me to have a little bit of uh, facilities to go out and do all those sorts of things. Well, but I don't want the pressure off you. I want the pressure on you. I want you out there selling. And why are you not going hell for leather trying to sell as many of these as possible as we speak? Because when you've come to a... Oh, I'm getting upset. <laughs> I'm not trying to upset you, I'm actually just trying to answer, ask the question. Under the scrutiny of Doug Richard, Claire has crumbled. As well as ordering a vast number of pants with no means of quality control and no cash to pay for them, Doug's discovered that she hasn't even started looking for buyers. The reality of her predicament is hard for Claire to take. I'm sorry, Claire, my goal is no, just it's to understand. Not, yeah, I know, it's a simple question, but you know when you've got passion for something, it involves emotion? Yes, absolutely. Right, basically, the reason I'm not going out selling is because I think it's a mental thing at the moment, and that's the truth. Because I think I've come to a, a crossroads that I need uh, help and guidance, basically. And maybe that will think, to you'll think today, oh, God, you know, fantastic idea, but we're going to have to carry this girl. No, you're not. But just to have a break. So many people out there have fantastic ideas, and I'm just after a break. And I know that this product is so commercial. Claire, I think that you've got a novel product, and you may very well succeed, but you seem to be terribly unclear as to what you're supposed to do and what the next steps are and how you're going to go out and sell it. It all seems very vague to me. And that, that, that causes risk and that causes concern, so I'm out. Claire has lost the confidence of Doug Richard, who thinks she's completely out of her depth. She desperately needs to raise £150,000, but Theo Pafitis has got more bad news. Very simply, you haven't dealt with a quality issue, you haven't dealt with a marketing issue. Now, trust me, people do get things wrong. If it goes out there and it's not quality, your business is dead. The next thing is, get involved with somebody else who's in the actual business. This is not a project you should be taking on your own, and I too will not be investing. Theo Pafitis doesn't believe Claire can cope with the business on her own. He's the second dragon out. Will Rachel Elnor see things differently? There's so much that you are lacking. What am I lacking? How long have I'm we just got? A... <laughs> no, I'm just asking for a bit of feedback. If you were the kind of person who could make this business happen, you just beg, borrow or steal, whatever, get out there and get orders in. I like the product, but there's more than just having a great product. I and think that's I've got a problem. lot more than what you probably realise. I just don't see it happening and it's not one for me, I'm afraid, Claire. Despite Claire's She's persistence, eight. Rachel Elnor is out. Duncan Bannatyne and Peter Jones are the only dragons left. I mean, uh, it's n <laughs> surely there's a million other companies who do the same thing.